द लेक्चर फॉर द टूडे सेशन इज रिगार्डिंग एल्बो जॉइंट इन द एल्बो जॉइंट विल गो थ्रू द टाइप आर्टिकुलेटिंग सर्फेस लिगामेंट रिलेशन बर्सा मूवमेंट्स ब्लड सप्लाई एंड द नर्व सप्लाई ऑफ एल्बो जॉइंट एंड द एप्लाइड एनाटमी रिलेटेड विद द एल्बो जॉइंट introduction it is a joint between the lower end of the humerus and upper end of the radius and ulna it includes two articulation we can make out here in the diagram the articulations are humero ulnar articulation that is between the trochlea of the humerus and the trochlear notch of the ulna next is humero radial articulations that is between the capitulum of the humerus and the head of the radius type it is a hinge type of synovial joint articular surface upper articular surface is formed by the capitulum and the trochlea of the lower end of the humerus while the lower articular surface is formed by the upper surface of the head of the radius and the trochlear notch of the ulna we can make out here this is another capitulum this is another trochlea of the humerus while this is another the head of the radius and this is known as the trochlear notch of the ulna ligaments of the elbow joint so there are mostly three main ligament of the shoulder joint that is capsular ligament also known as joint capsules ulnar collateral ligament and radial collateral ligament fibrous capsules it is a fibrous sac which is enclosing the joint cavity the inner surface of the capsules is lined by the synovial membrane let's know the attachment of the fibrous capsule above it is attached to the medial epicondyle upper margin of the radial coronoid and the olecranon fossa and lateral epicondyle of the humerus below it is attached to the anterior and medial margin of coronoid process of ulna upper margin of anterior ligament and upper and medial margin of olecranon process while it is not attached to the radius synovial membrane we know about the joint capsules now let's know about synovial membrane the inner surface of the joint capsules and non articular bony parts inside the capsules are lined with the help of synovial membrane it is crescentric fold which is present between the humero radial and humero ulnar part which contains an extra synovial fat now between the synovial membrane and the joint capsules there are three other fat which is occupying the olecranon coronoid and the radial fossa it continues infinitely with the synovial membrane of superior radio ulnar joint this is known as annular ligament and here we have the head of the radius and the superior radio ulnar joint is forming here so below it continues with the membrane of superior radio ulnar joint let's know about ulnar collateral ligament we can make out here in the diagram it is triangular in shape which is having apex and the base apex is attached to the medial epicondyle of the humerus while the base is attached to the coronoid and olecranon process of ulna it is having three parts or three band that is anterior band posterior band and the inferior band or the part let's know about the anterior part the anterior part it is strongest which extends from the front of the medial epicondyle of the humerus to the tubercle of medial margin of the coronoid process it is taut throughout the most of the range of the flexion poster part which extends from the front of the medial epicondyle of the humerus to the margin of olecranon process of the ulna it is taut between the 90 and full flexion of the elbow joint inferior part it is oblique band which extends from the olecranon and the coronoid process of the ulna lateral ligament also known as radial collateral ligament it extends from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the annular ligament it is taut throughout most of the range of the flexion of the elbow and contributes to maintain the stability of the elbow joint relation of the elbow joint anterior relations are brachialis muscles tendon of biceps brachial artery and the median nerve medial relation flexor carpi ulnaris common flexor origin and ulnar nerve which is behind the medial epicondyle the posterior relation nerve to anconius anconius muscles tendon of triceps the lateral relations are extensor carpi radialis brevis and common extensor origin bursa related to the elbow joint so there are four important bursa that is related to the elbow joint two in anterior relation with the 
the triceps insertion two in relation to the biceps insertion we can see here in the diagram this is known as subcutaneous olecranon bursa and this is known as the subtendinous olecranon bursa let's know about subtendinous olecranon bursa a small bursa between the triceps tendon and upper part of olecranon process next one is subcutaneous olecranon bursa a large bursa between the skin and subcutaneous triangular area on the posterior surface of olecranon process next is two in relation with the biceps insertion that is bicipito radial bursa a small bursa which is separating the biceps tendon from smooth anterior part of the radial tuberosity the last one that is known as a small bursa which is separating the biceps tendon from the oblique cord let's see again this is known as bicipito radial bursa this is subcutaneous olecranon bursa this is subtendinous olecranon bursa blood supply of the elbow joint artery elastomosis around the elbow formed by the branches of brachial artery radial artery and ulnar artery supplies the elbow joint let's know the branches of the brachial radial and ulnar artery this is something known as the brachial artery which is having two terminal branches that is known as radial artery and ulnar artery the branches of the brachial arteries are profunda brachii artery which further divides into anterior and posterior descending artery anterior is also known as radial collateral artery same how this is known as superior ulnar collateral artery this is known as inferior ulnar collateral artery now this is known as the ulnar artery which is having the branches that is known as anterior ulnar recurrent artery posterior ulnar recurrent artery while the next branch of ulnar artery is known as common interosseous artery which divides into anterior interosseous artery and posterior interosseous artery from the posterior interosseous artery a branch is arising that is known as interosseous recurrent artery and from the radial artery the branch which is moving upwards that is known as radial recurrent artery now let's know the anastomosis between them so posterior descending ulnar artery anastomosis with the interosseous recurrent artery that is behind the lateral epicondyle of humerus same how radial collateral artery anastomosis with the radial recurrent artery that is anterior to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus the superior ulnar collateral artery anastomosis with the posterior ulnar collateral recurrent artery that is behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus same how the inferior ulnar collateral artery anastomosis with the anterior ulnar recurrent artery that is anterior to the lateral medial epicondyle of the humerus so this all anastomosis is supplying the blood supply to the elbow joint nerve supply is by radial nerve that is through the branches to the anconius musculocutaneous nerve that is through its branches to the brachialis muscle ulnar nerve and median nerve movements at elbow joint flexion is done with the help of brachialis muscle that is the main muscle second is known as biceps brachii which helps in supination of the forearm as well as flexion of the the elbow joint the third one is known as brachioradialis which is known as mid prone position muscle and this all the muscles helps in flexion of the elbow joint same how we have the pronator teres also which helps in pronation of the the forearm but it also helps in flexion of the elbow joint same how flexor carpi ulnaris also helps in flexion of the the elbow joint same how extension is done with the help of triceps anconius muscle the transverse axis of elbow joint is not transverse but it is oblique which is being directed downwards and medially this is because the medial flange of trochlea lies about 6 mm below its lateral flange when the elbow is extended the arm and forearm do not lies in the straight line rather forearm is deviated slightly laterally can you see this is known as the arm this is known as the forearm and you can see that forearm is deviated laterally so we can say that this is the angle of deviation of the long axis of the forearm from the long axis of the arm is known as carrying angle the carrying angle disappears during the pronation and full flexion of the the forearm the forearm comes into line with the arm in the mid prone position the position in which the hand is mostly used the carrying angle varies from 5 to 15 degree and is more seen in the female because the wider carrying angle in the female avoids rubbing of the forearm with the wider female pelvis while carrying the loads example 
bucket filled with the water from one place to another place. Clinical anatomy related to the elbow joint, elbow effusion, dislocation of the elbow joint, gun stock deformity, cubitus varus and valgus, Volksmann ischemic contracture, nurse made elbow also known as pulled elbow or subluxation of the head of the radius, tennis elbow that is known as lateral epicondylitis, golfer elbow that is known as medial epicondylitis, the student elbow will be there that is also known as minor's elbow and there can be a knob entrapment or also known as compression of the knob around the elbow joint. As we know that the normal carrying angle is nearly 5 to 15 degree. Now we have to know about what is cubitus varus and cubitus valgus. Cubitus varus it is a deformity in which the extended forearm is debited towards the midline of the body. It means the carrying angle is decreased here. So let's know about the term that is known as gun stock deformity. Cubitus varus is also known as gun stock deformity. A deformity of the elbow resulting in decreased carrying angle so that with the arm extended at the side and palm facing forwards debited of the forearm towards the midline of the body. You can see here in the diagram the forearm is debited to the midline of the body and this condition is known as gun stock deformity. Let's know about cubitus valgus. Cubital valgus is a deformity in which forearm is angled out away from the body when the arm is fully extended. The two congenital conditions that commonly causes cubitus valgus are Turner syndrome and Noonan syndrome. Cubitus valgus is also known cause of ulnar neuropathy. Volksmann ischemic contracture. It is a deformity of the hand, fingers and the wrist which occurs as a result of trauma, fracture, cross injuries, bones and the arterial injuries. There can be a fracture of the humerus that is known as supracondylar fracture which leads to damage of the brachial artery. So following this trauma there is a deficit in arterial venous circulation in the forearm which causes a decreased blood flow and the hypoxia can lead to damage of the muscles, nerves and the vascular endothelium. The muscle who are usually contracted due to ischemia are wrist flexors and the wrist extensor less commonly affected. Dislocation of the elbow joint. The elbow joint is dislocated posteriorly mostly. So whenever the posterior dislocation takes place, three bony relationship is disturbed. That is the relationship between the medial epicondyle of humerus, lateral epicondyle and olecranon process. Now let's know about the elbow joint effusion, also known as distension of the elbow joint, which occurs mostly posteriorly. Capsules is weak and covering fascia is thin. The joint is aspirated by inserting a needle on the posterolateral side that is above the head of the radius with the elbow at right angle. Nurse made elbow also known as pulled elbow or subluxation of head of the radius which occurs in the preschool children that is one to three years of old. When the forearm is suddenly pulled in the pronation what happens here the head of the radius comes out of the annular ligament and the elbow is kept slightly flexed and pronated. An attempt to supinate the forearm causes severe pain. The reduction is easily achieved by supinating and extending the elbow and simultaneously applying the direct pressure posteriorly on the head of the radius. Tennis elbow also known as lateral epicondylitis. It is a clinical condition which is characterized by pain and tenderness over the lateral epicondyle of the humerus with pain during the pronation it occurs due to sprain of lateral collateral ligament of the elbow joint or a tear of the fibers of extensor carpi radialis brevis or an inflammation of bursa just deep to the extensor carpi radialis brevis or there can be tear of the common extensor origin. Medial epicondylitis also known as golfer's elbow. It is a clinical condition which is characterized by pain and tenderness over the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It occurs due to strain or tear of common flexor origin with the inflammation of the medial epicondyle following repetitive use of the superficial flexor of the forearm as during playing the golf. Minor salvo also known as student salvo. It is characterized by round fluctuating painful swelling over the olecranon process. It occurs due to inflammation of subcutaneous olecranon bursa 
lying over the subcutaneous triangular area on the posterior aspect of the oligodron process. You can see here this is known as subcutaneous oligodron bursa which is getting inflammated and that condition is known as minor salvo. Knob entrapment also known as the compression of the knob around the elbow joint. Entrapment causes pain, muscles atrophy and weakness in the area supplied by the entrapped knob. Let's know about the median knob entrapment. Whenever it passes between the two head of the pronated is this knob that is known as median knob can be trapped here. Then can you see here this is known as the fibrous arch which is found by the fibers of flexor digitorum superficialis. So the flexor digitorum superficialis having origin from the common flexor origin from the ulna bone and from the radius bone. So we can say that deep to the fibrous arch between the humero ulnar and radial head of flexor digitorum superficialis the median knob can be compressed. Ulnar knob entrapment, whenever it passes posterior to the medial epicondyle of the humerus, the ulnar knob can be entrapped here. Through the cuboidal tunnel formed by the tendinous arch joining the humeral and ulnar head of flexor carpi ulnaris, that is known as cuboidal tunnel syndrome. Same how the posterior interosseous knob entrapment, whenever it passes deep to the arcade of horse, a musculoepineurotic structures at the proximal edge of the supinator muscles or through the substances of supinator muscles whenever posterior interosseous knob is passing it can be entrapped there thank you